Ryan Chambers joins the show to discuss the Essa Lindell extension, the Thomas Harley deal finally gets done, and plenty more on today's episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy Stars fans, I'm Joey Ertson, former producer 105 Through the Fan. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. Joining us today is our old pal from over at StarCast of Remarks, Ryan Chambers joins the show. And I asked Ryan a few days ago if he wanted to hop on. He said, sure thing. And the Dallas Stars delivered. They gave us some news. Essel and Dell gets extended. Thomas Harley gets done, so plenty to get into on today's episode. Ryan, how have you been, man? Good. Uh, we took a little break on, on our end with uh, sarcastic remarks, just uh, you know, personal things going on in our own lives. Uh, a couple of my brothers, you know, James just got married, mm-hmm. and you know, he, he moved off uh, a little bit. Chris is also working for 100 Degree Hockey down in Austin, so we're really excited about that. And then, you know, me with my my big boy job, uh, you know, my main gig, I guess you could say, <laughs> uh, in my first year, I'm having a lot of fun. And then I get, I literally just got off work and I'm jumping on, you know, Stars Podcast with you. So it can't get much better than this. I'm having fun right now. Yeah, we're we're glad you uh, we're glad you're you're hopping on, and uh, I got a big boy job myself recently, so it's been uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's been fun uh, getting back into the the groove of things. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Okay, let's jump right into it, Ryan. Your thoughts on the Essa Lindell contract? They get it out of the way a year early. What are your thoughts, opinions um, on the matter with? Uh, the old 30 year old defenseman. It, a little bit of surprise, to be honest with you. I mean, I guess we shouldn't be surprised. We should have seen this coming a mile away, mm-hmm. in my own opinion. Uh, he, he, uh, so let's just, just talk about this first and the fact that Essa Lindell is elite in a couple of areas. And specifically, it's time on ice when it comes to the penalty kill. And those kind of guys don't come around very often. So the fact that uh, he gets, you know, he gets his contract taken care of is perfect to me. I, I love it personally. And, and I know some people, I don't want to mention their names because I love them to death. And they called out some other people on Twitter. I think you know what I'm talking about. But but uh, <laughs> they, they were like, this this is not going to go very well later on. And I'm like, you know, th- th- this is something you need to take care of now. And mm. honestly, the with the way that he was playing, and I don't like the way that some people were talking about him, but he's one of the best defensive defensemen in the national hockey league. It, it's just, there are so many things that we don't see that he does that get unnoticed. And I think 5.25 is a good number for him, especially he's not at the prime of his career anymore, but he's like on the back half of the prime of his career. Mm-hmm. And it, the other thing about it is that since he is a defensive defenseman, his speed is not going to be exaggerated as he gets older. He's going to be able to play mostly the same style until the, until he's 35. So I, I think this is a great contract. Uh, it, this is something that needed to get done. You can't replace somebody like Essa Lindell. The only bad thing about him is that he's not right-handed. <laughs> That's basically yeah. about, about it. So <laughs> I, I, I'm glad they got it taken care of. This is a good bit of work by Jim Nill, in my own opinion. Yeah, it'll be interesting to to see how it ages because it kicks in next year. So this deal will run till he's he's thirty six. But there was also a great point made uh, on uh, one of my my videos the other day or yesterday that, uh, from the one of the uh, listeners that said uh, it, this has uh, a way for Dallas to sort of get out of it too. They can buy him out in year four or five, if need be, like they did with Ryan Suter. It doesn't mean he's going to be in Dallas for the next five years. And the more I think about it, the, the more I like it as as well. I, I've said this a few times already. He's consistent. He's a good penalty killer, and he's reliable. He plays over 20 minutes the last you know six or seven years. He's been a steady face on this blue line. It keeps the continuity together. It keeps the fins together. The the Finnish mafia mm-hmm. continues to to rake in that cash, and I I think it's um a, a good piece of, of business for the Dallas Stars. And as you mentioned, I think I was shocked just because we were expecting Harley to get done 
first, but not not so much the money. And I know that will rub some people the wrong way or the term um, at five years, because who knows what type of player he's going to be when he's 34 or, or 35. But I think you you pointed out that his style of game can sort of last. So we'll, we'll see how it all plays out. I'm just curious how it affects the Wyatt Johnstons of the world, the Borks, and where Jim Nill is trying to fit all these pieces in because there's a lot of business that has to get done after this next season with Jamie Ben coming off the book. So it'll be really, really intriguing. So uh, definitely not a, a bad piece of business by Essel and Dell. I know the term in, in, in number is going to rub some people the wrong way. Maybe you could get him for cheaper after this season, depending on, on his year. But uh, I think, I think the stars want to keep kind of this core together on the back end. Cause Frankly, they haven't had a ton of stability defensively recently. They've had Miro, of, of course, but they've just kind of had a rotation of guys. And now they bring in Dumba and Labushkin, who are going to be here for uh, a few years. So it, you just kind of keep that that core together. And I think there's something to be said for that. So let, let's segue to Harley. Uh, I mean, not much you can complain about this. Just a bridge deal, two years, $4 million, Harley's back. What do you think? <laughs> I, you know, I shouldn't have been shocked, but I was shocked, honestly, mm-hmm. because I mean, we talked about this with like Jay Gottinger when Jay Gottinger signed his quote unquote bridge deal and he only got, uh, I can't remember, it's four, four and a half, something like that. And we were expecting him to get more. And then we were, you know, a lot of us were talking about the fact that Harley was looking for something similar. We we, we thought, you know, he's looking in the five and a half to six million dollar range because mm-hmm. surely he's, you know, looking for at least as a Lindell money somewhere around there. And then this pops up and, you know, for the, for the people that were complaining about at the beginning of the day about the SL Lindell numbers and stuff like that and complaining about the, the term and the no trade clause and all of that stuff uh, quickly get a slap in the face with that. And you can't argue with that. That, that, yeah. that is a piece <laughs> of work. And that is exactly why, uh, Jim Nell is one of the best general managers in, in the NHL is for contracts like this. And it, it again, it helps a ton when you have a team that is going to consistently go out there and win. And especially right now, the window for the Stanley Cup, as some people call it, is wide open for this team. And yeah, it's a little different than it was with kind of with like a youth movement coming in with Maverick and Logan and, you know, Wyatt and I'd throw, you know, Miro in there a little bit, uh, but and then Liam Bixel obviously, but it, it it's a quality piece of work, and in my opinion, it's a steal. I I I honestly expected him to get five or five and a half at the very least, and then it come. Not only does he get get it down to four years, but it's only or excuse me, four million, but it's only two years. It's not like he gave him a giant extension on top of that, so. There were a lot of factors that kind of went into it, but the more I thought about it, it's like, you know, he had a really good season, Harley did. He was double digits in goals, 15, 15 goals on the season. But, you know, as he went further and further into the season, we saw less and less of that offense kind of come out. He struggled in, I don't want to, I don't want to say struggled in the playoffs. He still had a decent playoffs, but there were plays yeah. that he, that stuck out that were obviously his fault. And it was just just a couple of plays that where he just looked really bad. And, you know, that kind of makes sense as to why that number now is a little bit lower than maybe I, I expected. So, uh, again, long story short, Jim, no, perfect, perfect number, perfect number of years. It, it, this works perfectly. And the biggest thing, in my opinion, is it keeps them under the cap. So now they can go out uh, at the trade deadline and that's what a lot of us are assuming and go out and get a, a top four defenseman like they really want to get. And uh, over the course of the season, they can accrue that cap space and have m- more ability to go out and get a bigger guy. So th- that's another side effect of this signing with Harley. So, Yeah, th- this Harley deal feels a bit like one of those two-year prove-it deals instead of a, a, a one-year prove-it deal. And he had his moments in the playoffs. He really did. But uh, to, to his defense, he had to go up uh, against some top lines, some really, really good players on the other side 
which he didn't necessarily do in his first postseason as a Dallas star. He was on that third pairing, and Dallas could shelter him a bit more. So he's going to garner some of those, those bigger minutes uh, against better players. It's a two-year deal, as we mentioned, at $4 million. He is uh, an RFA with uh, arbitration rights, a $4.5 million qualifying offer in a, in a couple of years. So we'll, we'll see how it all pans out. But as you mentioned, it's probably going to be an absolute steal for, for Dallas. Uh, they're going to have no issues getting their, their return on investment here. And I, I think by getting Lindell done sort of fit Harley into, okay, like you're going to fall here. You come out the next two years, you prove you're like close to a top 20 defenseman in the NHL. I think he can get there. I really do. I think he could be sort of the Devontae's to McCarr thing with, with Miro. Mm-hmm. Like they could just be really, really stinking good together, uh, even on different pairings. Then yeah, we're going to, we'll, we'll invest in you and, and we'll give you a, a nice comfortable uh, deal um, alongside Miro. So I, I'm excited to, to see where, his game goes next year. I just, I was so high on him last season and I thought he's a, a 50 point type of defenseman. And he was, he was sniffing around there and it feels like he can take his game to another level. But as you alluded to, I think there's that next step now in the postseason. Can you lock it down? Can you be that like stout defenseman? Like we know Miro is, and he can still provide that offense. Can you be an all around defenseman? I think that's sort of the, the next question mark with him. All righty. We'll, uh, we'll dive into some more of this defense. <laughs> um, There's a lot there. There's yeah, a lot. <laughs> and, and plenty of other training camp storylines. Cause it's originally why I, I wanted to have you on talk about some of the storylines, what you're looking forward to um, and plenty more. So we'll do that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste your time searching through thousands of tickets. Go ahead and download the Game Time app on your smartphone. It takes 30 seconds. It's a bit free and available on the App Store and the Google Play Store. Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying tickets. Download the game time map, create an account, and you can use the code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L. That's locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. Okay, Ryan, I, I wanted to ask you. What are some of your training camp storylines as we're just uh, about a a day out? What are you looking forward to? What are you intrigued about? Um, Yeah. What, uh, what has your, your, your ears perk up for, for training camp in a couple days? So first off, before I go into that, because I I got a lot of my storylines from this particular thing. I don't know if you saw on victory plus, but Josh and razor, uh, did a huge in-depth, like about four videos about the season preview for the Stars, and they did okay. an overarching video, and then they talked about forwards in a separate video, defensemen in a separate video, and then goaltending, goaltending in a separate video. And of course, the goaltending one was the longest because it's Razor. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but anyways, uh, it, it, I highly encourage everybody to go and and listen to that conversation that the two of those guys had because it, it got me more excited and kind of intrigued because Razor pointed out some things that I hadn't quite thought about. Now, the the obvious one for me, the biggest one is the defenseman, like the the decor. How is it going to line up? We, we've talked about it a little bit on our show. I know you and I have kind of talked about it a little bit off air sometimes, but there is a ridiculous amount of just different combinations that and different pairings that we can see with all of these options. Like uh, when Chris Tanev was traded away because he fully decided that he was not going to be able to do it in Dallas and Toronto was going to give him a better deal. We quickly shifted gears uh, and we meaning Jim Nil did. And he went out there and he, instead of going for quality, now he went out there and got quantity and, in, and then that, that's not a knock to Dumba and Labushka. They are both very capable right-handed defensemen, but obviously they're no Chris Tanev. So, but what it does do is there's there's lots of options here. I mean, Dumba, can he play a top four role? He has in the past, and he, he didn't do that in Tampa at the end of the season, but he can. Um, we've seen Labushkin, wh- who we both talked about, 
one of the biggest qualities for us is the fact that he was able to play on the top pairing, you know, five on five with Morgan Riley, the number one defenseman from Toronto. So can he do that as a right-handed guy with Miro and let Miro play on his strong side? That's an option there. Uh, you've got, you know, Brendan Smith coming into camp who is a lefty, but has shown he can play both sides of the puck. He can also be a seventh defenseman guy and not someone you have to worry about, you know, are we stifling his development? Um, you bring back Lundqvist who he's, he's gotten chance after chance after chance. And the more I've thought about him, he, he played better last year. He did. Absolutely. It, it's just, it's just not where we wanted him to be as, we we have a, we had a lot of expectations for him obviously with nil trading that first round pick away but uh, anyways th- the biggest thing is what are the d pairings going to look like and basically the way razor put it is you just draw the number 4 and then a circle around it and it's mm-hmm. like in this situation miro plays with this person yeah. here in this situation miro plays with this person here and i'm like i mean that makes a lot of sense but we saw that in the, how that worked out in the playoffs in I mean, it wore him down. So that's going to be the most intriguing thing to me is who are the pairings going to be? And then how are we best going to utilize Miro Haskinen in the ways that he should be and limit his, I don't want to say limit his time to like, excuse me, to like 19 minutes a night, but like limit it so that he's got enough stamina to get through the playoffs because it seems like the last two years we've been stifled right there at the uh, the conference finals. So we just need one more little step. And that's going to be what Elaine Nazardine is going to have to figure out the, uh, the D coach. So, yeah, I, I think the, the summer was sort of a reaction to what happened against Edmonton where Dallas just really fizzled out and they were mentally and physically exhausted. So they went out and almost got, too many defensemen to some degree. They got one extra just so they can have bodies, not only on that right side because they need some right shot defensemen, but just bodies in general that can chew up minutes for you. And yeah, Miro can play with anybody at any time. We saw that in the postseason. He was playing with Tanev at five on five. He was playing with Lindell at five on five. Then on the PK, Tanev and Lindell would get trotted out there and then Harley would go out and they just sort of did this cycle of everybody play with everybody. But the issue was for the first two series, they played with five defensemen (laughs) and they completely ran uh, Miro and I mean Tanev and even yeah. Lindell into the ground a bit. You could even say Ryan Suter, who I thought played really well in the Colorado series, um, and the first series against Vegas, and then his game sort of teetered out in the end as well, along with a, a lot of other stars. So now they got some bodies in there to to chew up minutes, which is a a good sign. But you're you're spot on. I'm just I'm I'm intrigued to see how it all works out. Like how does Dumba come in here? Can he? get back to another level general manager Jim Nill had that little Q and a with, uh, with Mike Heike. And he said, Dumba needs to get to that other level where we, he is we need him to, to play. Yes. And, and he's, getting, he's getting three and a half. He's getting three and yeah. a half. So he need, he needs to prove it. And, and so is Labushkin for, for that matter. You could make the argument. They sort of went out and paid the right shot tax for those, those two defensemen. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think the combinations are going to be fun. I, I've said it. I, I don't want to see Miro on his weak side to begin the year. I think just put him on his strong side. You can always go back to him and Harley. You can always go back to that. Let, let's see what happens. You get him on a strong side. Maybe it open up, opens up his offensive game. Maybe it opens up the game in general for, for Dallas. I would love to see him on his strong side, but they don't seem too concerned about it. So <laughs> um, we'll, we'll see what uh, Pete DeBoer trots out there. On opening night, one one of my storylines I, I spoke about on Monday's episode, and I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by FanDuel. You've heard us talk all about FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Sundays are meant for watching football, and they have something 
a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV-based plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season out of market Sunday afternoon game. All you need is a Google account and current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. While you're on the couch watching the Cowboys just get absolutely demolished by the New Orleans Saints or whoever else, that will probably happen throughout the season. You can go to FanDuel, get in on the action this Sunday. Just visit FanDuel.com, download America's number one sports book. I'm kind of knocking on the door now of this. Like, this is why Johnston's team. <laughs> is it his team? Like, is 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 this is this the year? Like, man, hey, this is passing the torch. Like, Ben, you, you give it to your, your line mate, number 53, and he just has a, another huge year. If I could pick a breakout candidate, it'd be him again, Ryan. That's how much I love this guy. <laughs> and that, that that's not really fair with uh, what he did last year, but that's how much uh, highly I think of him. Well, and you're not the only one. Uh, yeah. He's he's going relatively under the radar. He's He's got the Barkov, Barkov-esque, you know, mystery behind him. Like Like people know pretty much who he is, but I don't think they realize how good he truly is. So... And, and, and I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with you because, and th- this is kind of what we talked about yesterday on, on sarcastic remarks, but it, we got this idea from Razor in the first video he did on victory plus uh, this team is in a youth movement now. I mean, yeah. this team has three cores right now. They, they've got the old core with Ben Sagan and, and then you've got the, the middle core with Rope Robo uh, you know, uh, Miro and then obviously Otter. And then you've got these young guys who are coming in and uh, with with Logan, with Maverick, with Bischel, with uh, also with Wyatt Johnston. And, you know, I hadn't really considered it like this because I always thought this was going to be uh, Mira Haskinen's team. But, you know, the, the way that Razor talked about Wyatt Johnston and it, it really got my gears spinning a little Good. bit in the fact that You know, Miro is very good at what he does. He is absolutely one of the world's best defensemen, and he absolutely should be counted on as a leadership portion of this team moving forward. But the the qualities that Wyatt Johnson has that we've seen in the playoffs is very hard to find. And 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 that's something that we've been missing. I, I felt like in in years before Wyatt Johnston, when we had really good teams, like in the 2020 bubble playoff run, it was a little, I don't want to say it was a, uh, it, it was like a one-off or whatever, but the thing that we, we were missing, we were missing a clutch player getting the clutch thing at the right time. Somebody who had and, the it factor. Like yeah, he has that. exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he's got it. And, and there's, there's nothing that you can do to measure it. But when you watch him on the ice, when you talk about him in the off season, other than Jamie Ben, Wyatt Johnston was the best forward on this team moving forward, and he elevated his game throughout the year, and he, he was best when we needed him most, and that was in the playoffs. And he, he's got those kind of captain qualities. So maybe this is Wyatt Johnston's team, and, you know, Miro kind of tags along with him. And I, I'm, I don't want to say that that's a 100% thing and that's what's going to happen, mm-hmm. but this has been the first time that I have questioned whether, you know, Miro is the next captain of this team. So, so it's cool to feel that. And, you know, statistically, I think Wyatt Johnson is at at least a 40 goal scorer this year and and a point per game player this season. That, that seems to be, I I don't even want to say like, that's the, the ceiling I, I, that's almost like mm-hmm. my expectation for him because of how much he has raised his game the last two years and he's only going to be 21 or 22. So it, it's, it, it's just ridiculous. And I, I think you're hitting the hammer on the nail there that this is starting to become his team. Yeah. I, I like what you're saying there. I think there's no doubt he's going to be a, a point per game player in, in this league at, at some point, maybe it's not next season, but it just feels like there's another level to his game. And he had a slump last year where he had like a couple goals in 16 games. Yeah. I mean, imagine if he's just humming for all 82, he's going to to put up astronomical numbers. And that was sort of the, the, the road I was going down where it's just, he just has this aura uh, about him. And as much 
as this may be silly, I don't think it's a coincidence that the star's social media team uses him like all the time in their yeah. <laughs> in their little silly little videos and stuff. Like he has he has the face for it. Um, he says the right things. He can speak French even when he's in. <laughs> in it's funny Canada. you thought about that. I was thinking about that too. I was just yeah. like all the Montreal media uh, when uh-huh. when they were were playing the Canadians up in Quebec. I was just like he, they were. He was the only one they talked to because he was the only one that could speak uh, French up there. So yeah, so he's going to be a a, a media darling, um, and uh, I, I think that's a, a good thing. And um, and a lot of people love Tidal Landry and thought that was sort of maybe a role he would sort of get into but it just got really crowded here i just i i think wyatt johnston's a perfect fit and i love mira will always be my my favorite player um mm. in, in in the world i, I don't necessarily see him as a, a captain and i and i i hate saying that it, it's like not a knock on the guy i just think he's the person that is quiet and he goes about his business he's obviously a leader in that locker room i'm not not yeah, trying yeah, to say he's yeah. not a leader. It, it is obvious. And, and Razor has echoed that throughout the past few seasons about the step he has made as a leader in the, in this, in this locker room or dressing room. Um, and, and funny enough, like he's a veteran now <laughs> and Miro's still really young, but he's almost a, a grizzled vet uh, at this point compared to um, Maverick Bork uh, and, and Stan Coven and, and company. Speaking of, of Liam Bixel, I, I do want to go back to the, the defense a bit. Because we saw Liam Bixel this past weekend in Traverse City. And I actually read the article your brother put out. And I thought it was great because he he sort of came to a conclusion that maybe we can pump the brakes on Bixel possibly coming up. Like, let's say where I was hoping like maybe December or January, he's ready to go. But I think Chris sort of came to a conclusion. He, he needs maybe the Thomas Harley treatment. Maybe he needs a full year in the AHL before he gets a, a real shot of playing in the big league, so to speak. And maybe that sort of weighed on Jim Nill's mind when wanting to extend Lindell. Where it's okay, maybe we just need a couple more years of a steady defenseman, somebody we know what we're going to get out of on a night in, night out basis. And then when Bixel's ready, we don't have to rush him and he can sort of find his way into this lineup. Maybe that's, that's sort of my theory right now. <laughs> what no, says you? No, no, that's, that's a lot of good. That's a lot of good thoughts there. Cause the, I didn't get to watch the first game as much, but from what I got from Chris and the way he explained it to me is that he, he, he was almost out there for every single goal against uh, in, in that first Traverse city game against the Red Wings. And, you know, you know, at the same time that, this is a prospect tournament. Okay. Yeah. It, yes. It, 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 it's, <laughs> yeah, you know, most people are not in the right mindset yet. No one's full speed, you know, and, you know, all these guys are training all off season long. They're, you know, keeping their bodies in shape and stuff like that. But a lot of them haven't played games in, you know, two to three months, you know, with, with a lot of these uh, prospects. So you do have to take what you see in those prospect tournaments with a grain of salt, uh, like very minute grain of salt. Now, on, on the flip side of that, the way that Big Soul is, he was the prospect to watch. Like, like yeah. he is, he was the guy. And he he was, you know, heavily being watched because of his, you know, where he could be this season. Like, the, the expectation that maybe he even gets up to the NHL this season. Mm-hmm. So, he, he's going to be criticized a little bit harder. He's going to be watched a little bit harder than some others. And it, moving forward, I, I think you're exactly right. I, I think we do need to pump the brakes a little bit. And and I even talked about this with Chris uh, uh, off air after we were done with our episode. But he seems to think that it, it's it's just a similar thing. This is just going to take a, a, basically a full year in the AHL. Mm-hmm. And he's just, and Jim Nill is just going to be like, okay, he's cooked. He's ready. And yeah. not cooked in the bad way, but he's cooking. He's ready to go. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, he, he's just going to explode on the scene, and he's going to show why he was taken in the first round by the Dallas Stars uh, a couple of years ago. Or was it a couple of years ago? Last year. Whatever. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Time yeah, flies, uh, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. It's like post-COVID, everything just fl- flies by. But it, it, anyways, it, he's going to get he's gonna get there in a lot of people's minds. It, it's just it, – it sucks that, you know – 
getting excited for this year, what he could be. You had to watch that, and that's the way that it in, ended out to be. The, the first game was really, really bad. Second game was a lot better from him, mm. but it's still not what you wanted to see him do. You want he should be dominating all of those all of those prospects out there, right? If he is mm. the guy, he should be dominating all of those all, all those spots out there on the in that prospect tournament. Yeah, and I don't want to insinuate that that your brother's article is like a bash piece on, on Bixel. By the way, there was a lot of positive oh, no, no, things no, no, in there. Like, no. please go read the the article in its entirety. It's great. It's on 100 degree hockey. Like he points out a lot of positives too. I'm just kind of nitpicking one little little sentence in, in there. So there are a ton of positives uh, with with Bixel bef- uh, as well. And also, he's 20 years old, and we have to take into account like this is gonna be his first full season in North America. That, that's a different change. Like living but a here. lot of people forget. Yes. Yeah, it, it, he's, he's not. He's not right from North America. Europe. Yeah, yes. he went right back to Europe um, after like a, a month in Texas. So that that is going to take some time in itself. So if he gets comfortable here, he gets a full 82. And uh, as we've seen recently with, with Jim Nil. And prospects, he is in no rush at all. No rush. If There's if Mixel no is dominating, if he's dominating the HL, he'll get his call up. Like like if he forces his way into the lineup, he'll 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 find a way there. And um, that that's certainly something I'm going to keep an eye on the preseason games, as you mentioned, where he's not going up against prospects. And as the preseason starts to wear along, I really want to see him against you know more of the veteran teams uh, when some of the more regulars start getting in the lineup just to see how he fares against you know everybody's going to be a bit bigger they're going to be stronger and they're going to have a lot more years uh, underneath their belt so how he fares um, against some vets out there will, will certainly be exciting uh, as well. well. And, you know the the thing that a lot of people forget about too, and we can't discount this is. He he did go deep into the playoffs with his team in the Swiss League, and and he was a major major part mm-hmm. of that team. And, and I mean, he was playing, uh, from what I remember, he was playing twenty five plus minutes a night on yeah. on in, in, you know as a twenty year old, and in in that league, he's not playing against you know you know, you know no offense to CHL teams, but like junior aged kids, you know, you know, yeah. s- you know fifteen to twenty one or whatever, he's playing against full grown guys and guys who are in the prime of their careers, you know, physically, you know, and even the 30 pluses that are some of them that are there. So he, he was, and he was, you don't get that kind of ice time by being really bad. So, yeah. so and, and, but again, it, he was playing on a much bigger surface and that, and that's what a lot of people forget and that don't know that aren't as hardcore ridiculous fans like we are. It is a very different size ice. It's not like soccer where it's always the same size. It's yes. not always. It, it's the same size pitch wherever you go. If in the MLS, in the Champions League, and UFA, it, it 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 doesn't matter. It's always the same. And in in hockey, that's not the case. North American ice is much smaller, and the rest of the world basically uses double IHF, aka the Olympic sized mm-hmm. uh, rinks. So that and that is. Believe it or not, it is a huge, huge huh. uh, curve for for these young guys who come over from there to here. And but we've seen guys do it. We've seen we saw John Klingberg do it. We saw Essa Lindell do it. So they're going. He, he's get he's he will be able to make that switch very very easily. I think it's just going to take some time. Yeah, I mean, hey, the the Olympic sheet is a is a different game. It 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 really is, <laughs> and not all Olympic sheets are, are one size fits all as well. You get some funky little dimensions. You do um, that's out true. there. That's true. And for and for context, uh, I went to to St. Cloud State University. They played on an Olympic sheet uh, for for a Division One college team. Like when opposing teams come into St. Cloud, like they struggle on an Olympic sheet. And it's one of the reasons. St. Cloud doesn't always do the best when they get into the tournament because they are playing on a 200 by 85 foot sheet. So the game shrinks. It's a lot different on home ice. My freshman year, I think they just boat raced everybody. They were the number one team in the nation. I I mean, they had some really, really nice pieces there, but they were like 18 and 0 at home. um, And they, they they pretty much single handedly just took everybody down um, in the conference. So it, it really does it really does matter. So um, uh, yeah, I mean it, it'll be fun to to watch him. You know, take take the ice and man, we got preseason games on Saturday. Right? I know, man. Already yeah, Saturday. I can't no way. We actually get to watch. Them. Yes, yes. We, right? We, like we don't need NHL Network or something for the one game uh, during the the preseason. We got Victory Plus, uh, which will be uh, will be awesome. 